In today's video, we're going to be discussing rear suspension and how is this thing going to hopefully make the car go faster. So stay tuned. Welcome back. In today's video, we're discussing rear suspension. I spent a lot of time researching and designing the front suspension on this car. I have videos if you want to go check those out, but it's time to give the rear suspension that same kind of treatment. I'll preface this video in that I'm still learning. What I discuss in this video is how I currently understand it. You may have a differing opinion and my viewpoint might even change after I do testing of these changes. But one thing is clear, suspension design is all about compromise. The rear suspension currently installed in my Mustang is a solid axle. It has maximum motorsports, lower control arms, torque arm, panard bar, and coilovers. Uh, while it is a very good, well-designed system, there is always, always room for improvement. Uh, that's just part of suspension tuning. Uh, tuning the car as a whole, tuning the car for the driver, tuning the car for the application, tuning the car uh, to the surface that it's going to race on. Uh, unfortunately, as the rear suspension is currently set up, the only adjustability that I have is the ride height. Uh, with the coilovers. This just does not get very much tunability uh, and we're gonna change that in this video. But first, let's discuss some rear suspension terminology. First up is anti-squat. It is suspension geometry that minimizes compression under load and is usually expressed in percentages. Next up is roll steer. Uh, it's similar to bump steer in the front uh, it's a steering effect of the rear axle during uh, body roll. Then we got roll center height. Uh, it's the point in which the body rolls around for the, the axle we're looking at, uh, meaning the front or rear will have different roll centers. Uh, the side view swing arm length uh, is the distance between the wheel center and the instant center. And then instant center is a uh, theoretical point where the suspension arms appear to kind of intersect and they act as the pivot point for the uh, suspension arms. Since I mentioned that I have a torque arm, that is the, the only suspension that I am going to focus on for this video and for this design right now. So here is my current model of the rear suspension. I modeled it in suspension analyzer. Most of the parameters here are dictated by the Maximum Motorsports uh, design, so the side view, swing arm length, and the instant center forward location, the blue dot, is defined by the length of the torque arm. And then the roll center height, the black dot, is defined by the panhar bar height. As the suspension compresses from acceleration, as shown here, the instant center moves down and the anti-squat starts to decrease. As the suspension extends, as during braking, the instant center moves up and the anti-squat increases. However, the torque reactions are different for acceleration versus braking. For acceleration, the torque arm is pushing up on the body of the car. For braking, the torque arm is pulling down on the body of the car. Therefore, higher or lower anti-squat values for each scenario may or may not be desirable. The torque arm by design is good for acceleration, but it can cause a brake hop depending on the length of the arm. You want the arm as short as possible for maximum acceleration, but then as long as possible to reduce uh, brake hop. It's all, all about compromises. Uh, to lead more into the compromises, say for a drag car, you want maximum bikes and you don't really care that much about the braking, so you raise the car to increase the anti-squat. But then for road racing, you want a lot of braking and you don't care about that much about the standing starts. So you lower the car to get good braking and also to lower that CG. But for autocross, I want good acceleration from a standing start, good braking and a lower CG. Uh, we can't have it all. We're going to have to make some compromises. But in those two examples, what is happening when we actually raise and lower the car? The torque arm length isn't changing. It's basically the angle of the lower control arms, which then raises or lowers that uh, anti-squat value. It can't really be that easy, right? Well, it's not. Uh, remember that other terminology that I have yet to mention? Roll steer? 
Yeah. So control arm angle plays a big part in roll steer. So as the control arm, we'll draw it here. So this is our axle and it pivots around this point. So as the control arm moves up and down, it's creating an arc. So then the longest point is when it is level and then shortest points will be when it's either up or down. So as the car rolls through say a corner, the outside control arm is moving upwards and the inside one will be moving downwards. Uh, their starting angle is basically what defines which side is gaining or losing length. Outside control arm is getting shorter. That means the, the inside is getting longer and we'll have roll understeer. So that's meaning that the, the axle is steering into the corner. If the outside control arm is getting longer and the inside is getting shorter, then we have roll oversteer. That will mean that the axle is pointing to the outside of the turn and it's gonna make the car want to actually spin more. So roll understeer is safer and is actually the desired effect for most applications, but is it the fastest? Well, that is what I'm gonna start playing around with. I'm going to install adjustable lower control arm axle mounts, but since I have the Maximum Motorsports uh, Panar Bar, I can't just use off the shelf brackets, which are normally used on drag racing cars because that bracket actually wraps around the existing mount, uses the, the hole there. So I decided to engineer my own solution by designing my own lower control arm uh, mount and then using circle track parts to make new lower control arms. Here is the mount that I came up with. So I designed it in Fusion 360, then got it cut and bent by Sen Cut Sen. It is narrower, so it will fit inside of the existing mount and not actually interfere with that panhard bar uh, bracket that I mentioned earlier. It does have a hole that will be for the stock location. And then we got two lower holes with this lower one being two inches lower than uh, the stock location. This uh, mount will need to be welded inside of the existing bracket and then some trimming of the existing mount may be needed to be able to access uh, these holes. We'll see once we get it all installed. Uh, I already put a coat of paint on it as you can see. Uh, as this outside portion won't actually be accessible once I get it uh, welded into the, the bracket. Uh, and then since this axle mount uh, opening will be narrower, uh, it means that the Maximum Motorsport uh, control arms that I currently have on the car will no longer work. Uh, additionally, they have a spring perch that I haven't been using since I have coilovers. So time to ditch those anyways. So, I will be using rod ends with a Swedge 2 from uh, Speedway Motors. So these come in multiple different lengths, which is really nice. They have uh, right and left handed uh, threads to make it to be easy to adjustable. But enough talking, let's start actually working on the car. I'll start by removing the lower control arms. I will lose the factory sway bar attachment points, but I've been running without a rear sway bar recently anyways, and the factory location is just not good. If I need a sway bar going forward, I'll look into the Maximum Motorsports adjustable unit. Installation of the new arms is simple, but getting the new mount at the right angle took a lot of measurements and adjusting. I did need to use quite a bit of different uh, shims to be able to get uh, the right uh, fitment in the, in the mounts, but here is the finished product. What does lowering the axle pickup point actually get me? Well, it will net me two things that may be positives or negatives depending on how you look at it or how extreme I actually take it. Uh, first is the control arm angle. If it runs downhill from the axle to the chassis, the car will have roll understeer. If the control arm angle runs uphill from the axle to the chassis, it will have roll oversteer. Uh, so this change will now get me roll oversteer on the car. I was kind of at a downward angle, but I want to be careful here though. One, I don't want too much roll oversteer to where the car is now really a handful to drive. And two, I don't want the control arms to be transitioning between like roll oversteer and roll understeer or vice versa. This will make the car unpredictable, meaning that uh, with a little bit of roll, the car may have roll understeer and then transition to a lot of uh, roll more roll of the car, it might uh, transition to roll oversteer. So if the angle is too shallow, it might be able 
go into the remote understeer to roll oversteer. So that is one thing that I really want to be careful on. The next thing this change does for me, which again may be good or bad, is increasing the anti-squat. Uh, this will help with acceleration, but if I take it too far, uh, it will cause brake hop in the car. This is exactly as it sounds, under braking, the rear end will hop as it loses and gains traction, which is not good. Uh, there are a couple ways to remedy this. One is obviously to decrease the anti-squat, but I think uh, tuning of the springs and the dampers uh, might also get me there. Uh, last resort would be using the brake proportional valve on the car to decrease the rear braking. But these are things that I won't know until I get the car on course and actually take it to its limit uh, under roll and under braking. I always forgot. I got the club scales right at the moment because no one had it uh, next. So if you have a local car club, Definitely see if they have scales. It's pretty nice, uh, so I don't actually have to purchase these. I can uh, use them whenever, uh, basically, we need to. If someone else doesn't already have them reserved, of course. Uh, but got the car up, so I'm going to get it on the scales, see how much we actually weigh. Yes, I did weigh it uh, earlier this year at the National Tour, but I've weighed it with these scales before, so I kind of want to see what the difference is with uh, these scales and see if we actually did move anything around, get the car any kind of lighter. I'm also may try to corner balance a little bit, which is just tweaking each uh, corner to get uh, you know a more even distribution. But let's first uh, see where we're at. See what it is with me in it. Uh, 3223. The front is still heavy, 56.7%. Not to double check what it was before. But yeah, we're uh we're close to minimum. Minimum's uh 3180, and my fuel right now is just a hair over half a tank. So that's a little bit of weight. That's what, maybe only like 30 pounds more in the rear. So taking a quick look at uh, these weights, definitely need to get uh, a lighter battery in there and I know I need to do that. If I moved it to the right rear, rear where a lot of people will already move it, for some reason I am pretty heavy on the right rear compared to the, the left. Not really sure why, but I like to keep the battery where it is. I just want to get a lightweight one in there, but that will get, you know, probably 20 pounds off of there. Uh, but yeah, we need to get this a little more even. So with that, that kind of wraps up the lower control arm modification that I'm doing on the car. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one where we will actually take the car out to an autocross, get it on course, get it under a roll, get it under braking, see how it actually does, see if this was a good change or a bad change. All right, future Steven here. So I have taken the car to a couple autocrosses now and I can say that I do really like the rear suspension change that I've made to the car. So I don't have the sway bar on there as I said in the video, but the car does rotate so, so much better with uh, the change that I've made. And it's, again, it's a little bit of roll over steer and some more anti-squat. Uh, it digs really good out of the corners. I do want to still try out the, the middle adjustment on there. I'm in the lowest hole right now. Uh, so I do want to try out the middle one just to see. I'm not really noticing any brake hop as well, but the two events that I've done, they've had some hard braking zones, but nothing like really like demanding, I feel like it's a kind of a quick thing and then back off the brakes. Just wanted to give a quick little update to finish out this video. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next one later.